good beautiful people it's your boy Emmanuel aka Power and Papi and we are finally doing it I know I know trust me I know it took so many comments and requests for this one to happen but I don't know why it did um but yes I'm making I'm doing the right thing we're talking about Power and Music 3 finally yes man show them camp um legacy acts at this point legacy hip-hop acts from Nigeria the greatest duo system Daji and the band you know Tech and Ghost being one of the most prominent rappers um, on the Nigerian scene. Obviously cut out a series like this um, in order to survive <laughs> in the Nigerian music climate. Because that's the dilemma of most rappers. Um, having to find some other, um, some other avenue to express um, their passion in one end. Being in that case like Clone Wars where they are going for any rapper's head in the in the same sense still describing and touching on social um issues is basically social commentary which essentially is hip-hop you know now this palm wine series um came out of one close relationships with multiple artists and singers that they have around their around their disposal so it ended up making sense to commercialize their craft and by embedding so much um of high life and juju and and really build this universe and that really encompasses um, both their rapping abilities and their crafts and also um, just the beauty and joy <laughs> that comes from high life music and juju feelings and and Spax is the being as being the main producer um, spearheading that entire um, soundscape for them and um, he does a phenomenal job on this project might I say by the way like it's still a great job from Spax I don't think palm wine series would be what it is without him now mind you every palm wine song is as good as the hook let's keep it a buck like no one is going in there expecting either tech or ghost to wrap each other's heads off no nah, they're not that's not what this project or what the series projects you know um one thing it does actually it makes some for it makes room for some form of vulnerability you know what i mean it gives them avenue to express themselves as men in today's world should okay which, by the way, <laughs> this is called Power Volume 3, and it's the fourth installment. I know. It bothers me, too. It bothers me, too. I don't know why they just threw a wrench into the numbering system and just called one Express. It is what it is. But anyway, we've known from the past couple projects that this series takes up a f format. It has a format, basically. Hook verse, hook verse, hardly do we get bridges. Sometimes you get a verse from the singer, but in essence, they don't spoil the jazz that they have because they understand the format that they follow to, and they follow this template to a T on this project, as well as every other Palm Wine series we've gotten. Palm Volume 3 opens up with a vocal intro as the voice of Folu um, Storms basically opens up the project and describes the project as what we've necessarily expected it to be navigating love and relationships in a place like lagos but i think the beauty of this project is it's in its creation as i said a song is as good as it took and also they built a brand they built a reputation that any singer will be honored to be on this project with them you know so so we have new acts we have new faces like big tony and he fits the entire puzzle like a if he if, if fits like a glove like he fits in the entire world and universe that they've crafted with palm wine series and it's impressive it sounds very good enjoyable in that high life in that high, high life kind of run that we, we would expect from spax um okay verses from both acts um but i would say not the best of flows or cadences from ghost in the first verse i thought I, he, he, he sounded awkward in, in some runs um over there but it wasn't the worst thing um it, he ended up nicely and transitioned nicely into the hook which saved that verse for me but other than that like it would have been a consider i would have considered one of the weakest or one of the weakest ghost verses in a long time in terms of flows okay we get to thames and this thames record is interesting because one obviously an old collaborator she's been she's been about this palm wine life since um since express actually okay not that deep but anyway she um opens up the record and i absolutely love the the drum patterns on this on this one and she does this particular run that i hoped that she did throughout the rest of the song but we only got it at the beginning and maybe at the end is how she opens the verse like eh? come on let go 
and I loved that run, but we didn't get much of it again, which was sad because the hook was I. The hook ended up being okay. I like, didn't end up being the jam. We didn't end up being the meat of the song. We move on to the skit, which actually I enjoyed. Um, the first skits that came in, um, the first time caller, all that kind of bands. It really made the feel of that radio or that driving by Lagos type feeling. Make it made it feel real. This took me back to like beat 99.9 type days. You know what I mean? When you're just driving in the traffic, and and then we get Oxlade, which by the way. Oxlade was made for this shit. But anyway, this dropped in the middle of him having a massive, massive run with Closer, right? Closer is one of the biggest records out of Nigeria um, at the moment. And I like the subtle reference to it, too, that Tech made. Uh, I think that was cool. That was cheeky. But the record is actually very powerful. Very, very palm wine to the core. Um, Ghost sounded phenomenal on this. Like, he was in the pocket of this beat. And I liked it. I enjoyed this flow on there. Oxlade aced this record. One of the strongest choruses on the project. And then we moved to Kele by Bodge, which, by the way, is a veteran in this Palm Wine series P, okay? Ain't no Palm Wine series without Bodge. Palm Wine music without Bodge is like... It's like Barcelona without Messi. It's like everybody from Mohits without Don Jazzy. It's like Bob Risky without the Cups. You know, it's, it just doesn't hit the same. You know what I mean? Palm Wine series wouldn't exist without Bodge. Like, he was the main reason they started this shit off of feel all right okay um so yeah and he came in there like a veteran you know what i mean he showed up and showed out why he is here and budge did what budge does and <laughs> dropped a stellar record and on this track by the way ghost decided to like let me talk my shit real quick you know what i mean let me let these niggas know this is just like when you bet on yourself it's like an act of faith that's how we went from grass to grace like two faced with this classic tapes then we drew up a blueprint then these new kids tagged and trace <laughs> and then we have a track like wyw which i think it's internet slang for what you want but I don't know, in this context, I think it means wish you well, which is ironic because the entire point of this song is do me, I do you, basically, is Basbo's type energy. It's basically um, them telling a story. It felt like a conversation of from a guy to a girl that he cheated on her because she cheated on him. So it's like that kind of mentality that it's like, I can't be the guy for you. Um, I couldn't be that guy you needed and all that stuff. And then the, the girl, which is played by um, Bella in this case, um, which, by the way, stellar voice, stellar vocals, a beautiful tone. At the first instance, my ear perked that I was like, wait, is this Amore type thing? It was almost like that. But anyway, the she, she goes on the hook. I, I hope she cheats on you. I hope the next person does all the worst. And I think you left me for a bitch called Karma. It was the line that really took me by, away, which I thought it was. It was really brilliant on this record. This was one of the few times I, like they showed some depth or at least a different angle of talking about love and relationships. And then we got Tim Lyry, which uh, I've been a fan of since the, his debut project that came out this year, Worry Less, still one of the f best projects. And I feel like Tim Lyry is a good act for a Palm Wine series. It makes sense that he's here and it's, it's a good look, most definitely, because I'm sure he's, he's picking up fans out of this collaboration. Funny enough, this was one of the few records that I thought didn't, didn't necessarily hold much weight in terms of production. I thought it was kind of plain production um, throughout the entire time. Not too many elements here to really beef up or fluctuate the record or make it dynamic as, as you would usually get from SPAX, which were nice um, runs and, and, and pockets that SAX came in there, which obviously you would expect. But um, for production status, I think this was probably, the, probably one of the flattest moments um, per se. And um, I guess Tim Larry did what he could do on it. He had a very cool enough run for this but it didn't end up making the record stand out um the, again it wasn't as adventurous it wasn't as pronounced production wasn't standing out to you so it yeah and then we get into freaky which um this one was dope this one is a very raunchy dirty record straight off the gate like this was just everybody tearing shirts and we get this like so jazz almost like from the 70s on some on some funkadelic type delivery from from manuel's freaky with my like he's just doing all those runs and in the back end he's just saying freaky 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 like the layering of that man all that came and really really 
um, supported and, and supplemented the beat nicely. And um, yeah, everybody went in their bag with this raunchy feel. This was the time to to not even sugarcoat anything. They were just going off the rails. I mean, this guy said, um, what's a good time without debauchery? I'm trying to make your toes curl. <laughs> so what's the safe word? Like, yeah, he went there. Uh, and then we got Loj, which came in a very Loj esque type production. Like this was a beat made for Loj. This is the kind of bounce you would expect him to pick up of, like for massage. With a very deep and raunchy bass line that is always commanding some form of charge, almost has as like a subtle dancehall hint to it. Ghost's verse was about like, oh, so let's turn up, turn up, let's run up, run up. I hear that down run. Like it was just like all oh, too, uh, you know, on the nose. But anyway, that was the Loj record. Um, and then we get Toby, which I was looking forward to this particular feature. Toby is like the closest thing to Anderson Pack, you know what I mean? A singer type rapper. Um, but essentially, he has that kind of flow or that level of flexibility from a singer to a rapper. We can, we can essentially get that on this record, which I thought was a good choice to to um, showcase both his singing abilities and his melodic rap. Manifest and World, now this is one of the more hip hop moments that obviously they're inviting a rapper and barely do you see them invite a rapper. If they do, usually it's Poe. And we got a manifest from Ghana on this one, which for a hip hop moment was about okay. <laughs> I don't think this is the Alario moment, but it's almost edging to the Alario moment on this album. And then we get to Apollo with Te Iwa, which has like a almost laid back, afro swing type of vibe to it um but essentially tay has a nice vocal run with it but the record is boring bro the record is boring i didn't think take much from it, it wasn't a memorable hook it wasn't a memorable melody um on the record and it's just tay doing tay thing sometimes but yeah the atmosphere overall wasn't necessarily want to stand out this is one of the issues of having a lengthy project like you end up finding more fault and weak spots that essentially could have the project could have done well without not to say it's a bad song it just felt like beating a dead horse at this point now on the song old flame with nesta i really enjoyed the premise of this one obviously is reminiscing on old times there was a lot of nostalgic references here especially in ladipo's verse and nesta on this record sounds as palm wine as you can get it kind of took me back to like tropicana with flash and i thought it was a great fit for the soundscape of the project and then we get to um if it's love this is probably the worst one on the record uh, and then we end up with the outro no regrets now this is a stellar moment i love it because it feels like a closer it feels like a closer to the series and this brings me to my last point well shout out to mologo by the way mologo one of the best collaborators with sdc just like budge um he has been present throughout many of the records except the first one i think and and he has stood out on many of those <laughs> records and he does so on this one as well and um this outro essentially ties into um the legacy that they're leaving behind you know having no regrets and i really love the subject matter on this one it was it, it felt a lot more emotional obviously it wasn't in the same subject matter of love or relationship like the rest of the other songs so it felt like a breath for breath of fresh air it felt like an intentional outro for the song very personal they're reminiscing on old times um, bringing up Cobain, um, yeah, it was it was a wholesome moment. It was a wholesome closer. This to seeing all what they've done and what they've built with this series is absolutely phenomenal. And this record made me re realize that wow, these guys really did this. Like over the years, um, since 2017, putting out the first EP and testing the waters there, and then going aggressive with it on the next one with 10 tracks, and then coming back again with 12, and then you know what I mean, like they're coming there and, and serving the people really because this was in a high demand and they're really, really still serving the people but i feel like the record at this point at this point after listening to a 17 track palm wine series it felt like it, it has hit the peak um that that it has and um it just felt like there was there's some beauty in the closure and this record does just that but anyway it was an okay okay project and i think it's nice to say that they they should come to an end of this series now let Spax be <laughs> free that nigga. <laughs> Their legacy acts, like I said in the beginning, they've contributed so much to rap in general with this series. Say what you want, even though they're not the the standout moments, they they are still rappers and they're they're rapping on the beat. They're rapping every record. You know, you hearing Tech do some melodies. You know, Yang goes do some melodies. They're still rappers. These are still rappers. At the end of the day, this like listen. This is how aggressive they are as rappers. Imagine building and creating such a sonic beautiful world universe like like a universe as rappers 
and not even attempting to sing at any time. <laughs> That's how hardcore they are as rappers, you know? Yeah, it, it also played a part in the predictability of it. Like, you un- obviously understood what was coming. Um, you were just waiting for the hook. If the hook was good, you got what you want. If the hook wasn't good, you're skipping. You're moving to the next one. Um, so my favorites, essentially, Manuel's Body That Freaky Record, got Mind Alone with uh, Oxlade. Um, another song I would love, Kele with Bodge, The Veteran. Um, I ha- I'm also loving No Regrets, the outro, beautiful outro. Now for my final rating on this one, I would say it's a very, very solid 7 out of 10. I'm curious what you guys think are your favorites. Le- let me know in the comment section. And of course, if you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe, like, tell people, okay? I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to hit that button. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I've been your boy, Manu, aka Power Papi. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.